and welcome back to the Fish Hawk and Folklore, part two. In part one, we took a look at the osprey in the ancient world. If you haven't seen that video, I will drop a link to it in the description below, so go and check it out. Today though, we are starting in the medieval period with the Age of Chivalry. Let's dive right in. So, why the Age of Chivalry? Well, more specifically, we're looking at heraldic tradition. Heraldry is where individuals would have a unique coat of arms that could be used to identify them on and off the field of battle. Animals were a huge part of heraldry, with different animals symbolising different personal qualities. So where does the osprey fit in? Well, the osprey was nearly always depicted as a white eagle, clutching a fish in its talons. And like the eagle, it communicated the power and nobility of its bearer. Next up, we have the Hollinshead Chronicles. And I'll be honest, things get a little bit weird. One author claims that Elizabethans tried to capitalise on the fishing prowess of the osprey by taking young osprey out of the nest and tethering them at the base of the nest tree. Then, when the parents came to drop off fish, they could just take that fish for themselves. The same text also claims that ospreys have one taloned foot and one webbed foot. So you might want to take it with a pinch of salt. A tall tale though this might seem, the idea of the osprey as not just a consummate hunter, but borderline supernatural, was quite a common one in medieval England, with the belief being that ospreys must possess some kind of magical power, and that when fish saw the osprey's silhouette, they simply turned belly up in surrender. This is referenced in several contemporary texts, including Shakespeare, Check out this quote from Coriolanus. I think he'll be to Rome, like the osprey is to the fish, who takes it by sovereignty of nature. James I also tried to capitalise on this seemingly magical ability of the osprey. Records claim that he kept osprey alongside otter and cormorant on the River Thames and attempted to teach them how to fish for him. However, since this never became common falconry practice, we can assume it met with limited success. Our final note is a piece of countryside law for you. It was believed that the skin of an osprey, with feathers still attached, applied warm to the abdomen, was a cure for colic. That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed watching this brace of videos as much as I enjoyed making them. If you did, hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell down below and never miss out on any other uploads. Don't forget, you can also comment and tell us what you think. Until next time, look after yourselves.